All right. So when I was um, 19 to 20 years old, I went to a school, well, I went to the Boston Museum School of Fine Arts and didn't really fit in there. Uh, so I went to, um, I went to another school and it's what I wanted to go to the Boston Museum School of Fine Arts so badly. Um, I had been accepted to uh, Pratt, uh, the Worcester Museum School, Swain, which was in New Bedford and a number of other schools, but I really wanted to go to the Boston Museum School. And I went there for about, I went there for a summer program, a pre-college pre, pre summer program, and then also I, I enrolled. Well, I didn't fit in at all. So I applied to another school called Vesper George School of Commercial Art, or no, Vesper George School of Art, actually. And I went there for about a year. I didn't do it extremely well at either school because I was lost. You know, I'd never lived on my own. I didn't know how to take care of myself. I didn't know how to like cook, that kind of thing. Um, and so I was just experiencing life from someone who had never been trained in life. And um, it's unfortunate, but I left both schools. I never got a degree. I never got anything uh, much out of it, uh, except I'll tell you about one thing that really, that has really, really stuck with me. Number one, I was in a figure drawing class in the Boston Museum School, and I got the one, um, one, one set of words of encouragement when I was there and it was in a figure drawing class. It was absolutely packed with people and I was terrified uh, of everyone and everything. And the instructor came up to me and said, he put his hand on my shoulder and said, you know what you're doing. I didn't, but he, he was very encouraging. He said, you know what you're doing. You don't need me and walked away. But then at Vesper George School of Commercial Art, I had a teacher, um, a Mr. Cormier, who was, a uh, uh, Robert Cormier, who was in the um, Newbury Newbury Society, Newbury Street Society, the the art um, club on Newbury Street in Boston, and his work was well loved and he was highly revered, but he was highly critical, and so I just started showing up to his class drunk all the time, which didn't help things. But I remember the one thing he said to me that really stuck with me. He said. Uh, uh, he looked at one of my one of my uh, assignments and said about the figure drawing, there are no lines. You have to stop doing this. There are no lines in life, meaning dark outlines, which we call linear um, in art, and uh, which is a word I just learned. But uh, I, I was very I was linear, and he told me not to be. And so for decades, I tried on and off not to use lines. And it never, never, never really worked well with me because there are lines, Mr. Cormier. There are lines. There are defined barriers uh, between dark and light. There are defined barriers between colors. And, uh, you know, although he tried to drill it in me that they don't exist in life, now I know better. And I know that there are. And that's how I see things. So sorry, Mr. Cormier. So <laughs> anyway, what... Uh, this morning I was thinking about him because I went back into this painting Queen and decided to really tighten up the lines. She had a, a few days to be able, for the paint to be able to sit and to get comfortable on the canvas and just kind of become the colors and the shades that they need, that they wanted to be, the, color, the paint wanted to be. And this morning I went in and started cutting in and around the figure and in and around different shapes whoops, different shapes in the paintings with lines. Uh, but instead of using a black or a Payne's gray, which I had already used in several different places, I'd also used a purple, I had tried all different colors. This morning I went in with a nice dark teal and started cutting, cutting around her headdress, cutting, cutting around the entire figure, her fingers, her hands, her staff, which I had left without definitive lines for the most part, and it wasn't really working. She feels powerful, and people have been in my studio and seen it and gone, oh my God, this is so powerful. 
But without those lines, to me, she was missing the power. She was missing that push off the canvas and that, that definition that's gonna draw the viewer in and pull them into a different conversation than, you know, uh, you know, this woman owns the room. I really needed something more, something stronger to make her three-dimensional. So now there's teal in different areas of her dress surrounding the chair, different areas of the throne that she's seated on. And then I also went in back of this detail that's actually on the frame, on this frame at the RISD Museum, went behind it with just teal and that brought that carving in the outside that's hanging along the side of the frame or cut uh, on the, added to the frame, I don't know, and it made a deeper shadow. And it also helped to bring the entire painting together. Um, what you're seeing is the upper half, the lower half is behind the camera because this is eight feet tall and we already know I can't fit it in the video. Let me show you. Let me show you how big this is. I'm broad, but I'm not tall. I have shrunk, I am 5'5". Five five. I can't reach eight feet. So we split this into two canvases. As so I do a lot of paintings, upper half is here, lower half is there. I've cut around her feet with the teal. And so now her feet are more defined and pop out, pop out, pop out, yeah. Cut around a lot of the different uh, shapes and images in the painting. So sorry, Mr. Cormier, your belief does not work for me. I have to work the way I have to work. Oh, and by the way, I'm Beck Lane. This is Catalyst and Company. And people watching this, you have to learn to work artists. You have to learn the, a way that works for you in your style. So I'm wicked proud of this. And oh my God, every time I look, I see more chalk. You can see tons of chalk that I've left behind in there. But I'm really, really proud of this. And now we're gonna move on. And I'm very pleased to say, that um, although we've had a number of offer or we've had inquiries on Queen, um, I'm not proud of this part, we've had inquiries on Queen. Uh, we haven't sold her yet, she's still available, um, but I'm very, very proud to say that Jessica Brown, the, the woman at the center of this, the woman who was the reference material, her photographs from a photo shoot uh, were the reference material for, for this particular painting, she's been sharing it and she's had some really terrific um, validating comments to make about my intent behind the work, behind my portfolio, and, and the quality of the work as well. Which is funny, because when you look at it up close, from there, it really feels fine. The work feels like fine art painting, and then you get in close and you can see the big broad brush strokes and all the abstract shapes. Hi, Kitty. All the, yes, Kitty. All the abs yes, Kitty. All the abstract shapes that make up the painting. I don't paint without the lines, Mr. Cormier. I don't try and pretend that this is not a painting involving real paint, brush strokes, and the human hand. I love I love showing the brush strokes, the paint, and the human hand behind it. I also don't put glaze over my paintings either because I don't, although the colors would probably glow a little bit more, I don't like that it takes away the act of painting, which is another layer to this, another layer to all my work. It's about the act of painting and the process. So super psyched about this one. I'm going to go for a walk, the first one in days, because my fat little legs need some exercise. But we are going to call Queen Dunn, and I'm going to sign her, and she is available for purchase. If you uh, would like information on pricing, if you would like info and pricing, pricing and info. Anyway, if you're interested, please call J. Louise, J. Louise at Blue Egg Gallery, and his phone number will be listed down below. J. Louise at Blue Egg Gallery, and now in Fort Lauderdale. His phone number is 508-680-6812. I don't know. It's going to be listed down below. 6218. 6218. I remembered. Uh, yeah, give Jay a call, 
If you have any questions, and we're happy to answer them for you. Also, if you'd like to help support Catalysting Company, which this is, um, my channel is now Catalysting Company. If you'd like to help support Catalysting Company or me, uh, please go to links down below. Please hit like, subscribe. I'm really bad at this. Like and subscribe, and then you'll find the links down below to Tee Public, where you can buy images of my painting on t-shirts, mugs, uh, you can buy prints, posters. Uh, so T Public is down below. Also Patreon. Patreon supplies monthly support. Monthly support starts at five dollars a month, and you get all kinds of rewards for your support. Um, and then also uh, you can send tips through Cash App or PayPal, and those are down below as well. And there's also phone numbers for Raphael Coelho my rep in New Jersey, Newark, New Jersey, and Chase and Art Galleries here in Sarasota. All right, that's it. Got to take my fat little stumpy legs for a walk now and give this little, give this uh, lady a rest. I've been picking at her all day long. I love the way she feels though. When the canvases are both together, she feels like she's really coming off the canvas now. Don't say this often, but I'm super proud of this one. But I'm really, oh, I think the other thing I forgot was that Jessica Brown has been sharing this on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. That makes me so proud. And her friends have been sharing it and my followers. It just, it makes me immensely proud that people are that passionate about my work. Good on you, Jessica. Good on you. All right, take care, everybody. Ciao. Ready, Carrie? Here we go. Mew, mew, mew. Boy.